electricity. Powerful, fast, futuristic. You may think of electric trains as an up-to-date way to travel. But they've been around for longer than you might think. One hundred years ago, engineers in Britain were going all out to build bigger and faster steam locomotives. But some countries had already seen the potential of electricity. Countries like Switzerland. Welcome to the land of cuckoo clocks, Heidi and cheese with holes. But also... One of the world's oldest surviving electric railways. This line from Blonay to Chambly was opened in 1902. And amazingly, even then, the Swiss engineers built a railway that uses the same principles as electric trains today. The Swiss were very keen on electricity, and there was a rather canny reason why. First of all, they didn't have any coal, and you need loads of this stuff if you want to run a steam railway. What they did have, though, was massive mountains and lots of water. Put the two together, and you've got hydroelectricity. And so electric railways in Switzerland were born. Previous attempts at electric railways had tried battery-powered locomotives. Fine for a model, but back in those days, batteries were very expensive, not very powerful, and just like a steam engine, they were very heavy to carry around with you. Plug your railway into mains electricity, your locomotive is lighter and you have much more power. Come on, chap, you're behind schedule. The world's first successful electric railway was built in 1879. And using electricity from a third rail, it could whiz you along at a staggering four miles an hour. It was built by Werner von Siemens, the man behind the famous electronics company. And his ideas caught on around the world. In Switzerland, the ready supply of electricity saw a swift end to steam. Train design changed completely, and this 1905 Automotrice MOB11 shows how. With no bulky battery or steam engine, the electrics are hidden on top of the roof and under the floor, meaning it's got plenty of room for a driver's cab here, 16 passengers in second class, Jiggish, please. Two first-class compartments, each for six passengers. And another cab at this end. Now, before we get going, there's a couple of things I need to do. To get power into the car, on the roof there's a device known as a pantograph. It's spring-mounted, and to raise it, you release this rope. Now, if I was powering up a steam locomotive, I'd have quite a job ahead of me. I'd have to prepare and light the fire, fill the boiler with water, and wait for the steam pressure to build up. But, to power up an electric locomotive, all I have to do is this. Instant power at the clunk of a massive switch. Here I am in the cab of the 1905 MOB11. Absolutely fantastic piece of kit, and I'm going to drive it. This is the key control, it's the throttle. Basically, it allows more electric power into the traction motors the more I pull it back. This is also very important, this is the master switch. So once I've given it a notch of power, we can switch it on. And the third and perhaps most important control is the brakes. So, let's take this fantastic piece of railway history for a ride. Um, all aboard. Here we go. Right, so, first notch, and master switch, and break off. And we're moving, we're moving. It's quite a sprightly start for something that's just about 100 years old, quite incredible. Instead of a hazardous electrified rail, the power here is coming from overhead wires. Well, we're approaching a tunnel now, and that black and white sign there means I've got to sound the horn, so here goes. Oh, yes. The train has four electric motors underneath. This nifty toy shows how they work. 
Essentially, in here, you have a massive coil of wire and some very powerful magnets. Pass an electric current through that wire, creating an opposing magnetic field, and your central shaft starts to spin. And you've got yourself a motor. The electrical supply is 900 volts DC, direct current. That's not the most efficient way to send electricity down miles of wire. AC, alternating current, is better and has less risk of electrocution. But in 1902, there wasn't the technology to cope with it, so trains stuck to DC. We're now on just about the steepest gradient on this track, which is 1 in 20 but other lines in this area were as steep as one in 14. So it's pretty good for this old MOB 11. Even in such early days, electric trains had advantages over steam. They were cleaner, quicker, and on steep hills, instead of frantically shoveling coal, you just had to draw more electric current into the motors. Who wouldn't want this fantastic technology? Well, Britain, frankly. While countries all over Europe were entering a new era of electric rail, Britain was still very much caught up in the golden age of steam. But steam was dirty, labour-intensive, and by the 1940s, Britain's politicians felt it was time for a change. But electrifying 18,000 miles of railway would have been massively expensive. Luckily, there was an alternative, an easier way to replace Britain's steam locomotives that would, in the short term, be much cheaper. No overhead wires, no third rail. Diesel power. Britain's clever decision was to fit trains with diesel engines connected to onboard electrical generators. This is a little diesel electric and it represents how British Railways bosses could have their cake and eat it. Electrically driven train, no electric infrastructure. But if you've got a diesel engine, why the need for electric power at all? Diesel engines and trains are not natural bedfellows. You can't just stick a massive engine at the front of a train and haul lots of carriages like a lorry pulls a trailer. Pulling a train with a single engine would require incredibly robust gearing between the engine and the wheels, so you need something else instead of a gearbox. The diesel electric solves the problem by using the engine to make electricity. The engine produces mechanical energy and this is used to turn a generator. In the same way that I wind this handle to produce electricity on this small generator. And there we have electricity. See the light? What the diesel electric loco does is turn that electricity into powering an electric motor. The motor turns the electricity back into mechanical energy again and rotates the wheels. And it works! This diesel electric was built in 1957. For its size, it's very powerful, used for shunting wagons around rail yards. Under the bonnet, there's a 200 horsepower Rolls-Royce diesel engine. And that's connected to a 500 volt DC generator. Right, let's take it for a spin and do some work. Here we are in the cab. This is George, my second man. All right, George? Morning, Chris. Let's go. Two toots on the horn to let people know we're on the move. A bit more revs. Enjoy the sound of a six-cylinder diesel. Time to try my hand at some precision shunting and move some very old carriages into a siding. I've crossed onto the other tracks and now I've got to drive straight into the back of the valuable coaches. Very definitely the Norbert now. There we go. Right, brake on. 
Time to couple up. Simple as that. And we're ready to shunt. Into reverse, bit of throttle, brake off. So this is my first shunt. I'm shunting across a level crossing, and I'm not even at the front of the train. So it's quite tricky. I've got to look all the way down the line and make sure things are in my favor. Shunters like these are real workhorses, and efficient too. A thousand gallons of fuel could give you a fortnight's continuous service. Out into the picturesque outskirts of Peterborough, with four Belgian railway carriages. The combination of diesel and electric in this shunter means it can shift over 500 tonnes. So you need some pretty decent brakes. Let's test them out. There are no brakes in the carriages. We're just using the brakes of the shunter. Steel on steel, working very hard. Excellent. It's amazing that this little machine can do so much with just a diesel-powered generator and an electric motor. But if you want to move more weight and travel faster, you're going to need something a lot bigger than this. Something like a 3,300 horsepower diesel-electric freight loco. Or how about a high-tech, high-speed ice train? That is the fastest I've ever traveled on land. Electric trains have been part of the railways for over a hundred years, but the technology is ever-evolving. This bang-up-to-date diesel-electric locomotive contains some of the most advanced technology available. It's a Class 66, one of a new breed of diesel-electric freight locos that's transforming haulage in the UK. Today, it's going to Scotland with a train full of high-value cars like this brand new state-of-the-art sports utility vehicle which has been purchased by a Mr. Finlay from Motherwell and I'm about to drive it up that very narrow ramp over there and along the length of the very narrow train. Um, a brand new car, I do not want to scratch it. Easy does it. Blimey, that is tight. I have to say, I'm quite impressed with myself that I got up the ramp in one piece. Trains like this can now compete with trucks for all types of long-distance haulage. Of course, you tend to think of rail freight as a means of shifting unglamorous bulk like cement or coal. But this is far more exciting. One of these trains can carry the equivalent of 20 transporter trucks. That could be around 150 vehicles. So for long distance bulk loads, the train can have the edge. In fact, trains are now removing about 300 million lorry miles from British roads each year. And this is where this boy comes in. It's one of the real heavy haulers on the network. One of these can pull over 2,000 tonnes. The loco itself weighs over 120 tonnes. That gives it plenty of traction on the rails. However, the real secret of its pulling power is down there. Massive bogies. Not to be sniffed at. Bogies are the sets of wheels the train runs on. They're designed to swivel slightly to help get the long chassis around corners. And on this loco, the bogies are fully motorised. All three of these axles, one, two, three, and the three at the other end, are powered. All six axles have their own individual traction motors. There's one of them there. These motors are DC, which is direct current, and together they turn this loco into a 12-wheel drive brute. To power all those motors, you need a lot of electric. And that's where this comes in. 3,300 horsepower, 
of two-stroke V12 diesel engine. It's connected to a very powerful generator called an alternator. Instead of making DC though, like old diesel electrics, this makes AC electricity. So with an AC supply and DC motors, locos like this also contain equipment to convert the electricity. Seems a tad over complex, but if it gives more power, we like it. Well, every decent machine has a starter button, and I'm about to press the starter button on this Class 66 diesel loco. Well, that's a bit different from starting an MGB, that's for sure. I've just started up 127 tonnes worth of freight loco. Fab. We've coupled up to 20 wagons full of cars. The total weight is around 900 tonnes. So here we are in the cab of the Class 66 diesel electric locomotive, and we can tell immediately it's a modern locomotive because you've got your black box recorder over there, and alongside it, your computer control readout. Well, we're just over 25 miles an hour, and uh, I must say, you can actually feel your part of 900 tonnes rolling along here. Quite impressive. Top speed for the Class 66 is 75 miles an hour. So, with no traffic jams, the train is the most efficient way to get new cars to Scotland. But even the fastest diesel electrics don't tend to beat that legendary speed, 125 miles an hour. But luckily for passengers... Pure electric trains offer the chance to travel far quicker than that. This is Frankfurt main station in Germany, and this is an ice train, Intercity Express. This is one of the most recent versions of the German ice train. Instead of carrying an electrical generator on board like diesel electrics, it picks up 15,000 volts AC from overhead wires. Fantastic, futuristic, high-tech train travel. It's going to be spacious, it's going to be comfortable, and it's going to be really fast. Around the world, electric trains are now speeding their passengers to destinations quicker than ever before. In fact, some trains are now beating aeroplanes on total journey time. But that's not the only benefit. How's that for a first-class view? I can get this close to the front of the train because instead of a single large locomotive unit pulling the carriages, all the electric motors on this train are spread along the entire length of the train. This is the Ice Train Engineering Works. That's one of the motors which via this massive drive shaft and this gearbox drives two wheels on each bogey of the three centre cars of a five-car train. With six motors along its length, this is known as a multiple unit train, and it gives more traction and more speed than a single power car at the front. This motor may look pretty unassuming, but in here is some bang up to date technology. Gone are the old DC motors, this one runs on three phase AC power. AC traction motors are a major improvement on older DC motors. They give more power for less weight, and by controlling them with advanced electronics, you get better traction and less wheel slipping. All that points to more speed. But something is holding the train back. What's stopping many modern trains from going faster is twisty old track. When you go round a bend in any means of transport, you get thrown out to the side. The faster you go, the more uncomfortable it gets. So, to prevent turning railway journeys into white knuckle rides, trains have to take bends slowly. Unless, of course, they tilt. And that's why this ice train is known as an ice T. The T stands for tilting. Tilting trains not only look really cool, by leaning into corners they turn rather like banking aircraft. 
So instead of being thrown sideways, your bottom pushes comfortably down into your seat. Oh, you can't beat a good tilt. By tilting, we can take the corners up to 30% faster without feeling a thing. So a journey that would take a non-tilting train an hour can be reduced by about 20 minutes. But it's not the fastest by a long stretch. This is the Ice 3. It looks almost identical to its predecessor with that pointy nose, but this one's even more pointy, so it must be faster. Well, as it happens, it's got a top speed of 330 kilometers an hour. That's over 200 miles an hour. This is one speeding ticket I don't mind having. I'm taking an Ice 3 journey from Frankfurt to Cologne. It's 177 kilometers and we're going to make it in 72 minutes. But this train doesn't tilt. Instead of coping with bendy old rails, the rail company built a brand new track. It's almost straight, and what few curves it has are very gentle. So with eight powerful AC motors, you've got yourself a very fast train. This train was built by the Siemens Company, founded by Werner von Siemens, who built that first electric train back in 1879. Then the top speed was four miles an hour. Here, now, we're approaching 200 miles an hour. His passengers would have been gobsmacked. In fact, the train is so fast, aeroplanes between Frankfurt and Cologne are now being cancelled. It's very exciting because we are now approaching the top speed for this journey, which is 300 kilometers per hour, which is about the same speed as the jumbo jet takes off at. Two hundred and sixty one at the moment and climbing. We really are approaching the limit now. Look at that two nine eight point eight two nine nine point six. 297, 298, you can do it. 29, are we gonna get 299? We are, we've gotta get 299, I can feel it in my bones. 299.1, 300 kilometers per hour. That is the fastest I've ever traveled on land. Absolutely fantastic.